Hi everyone, it is time for chapter 16 of James and the Giant Peach. Let's see what happens next. And now the peach had broke out of the garden and was over the edge of the hill, rolling and bouncing down the steep slope at a terrific pace. Faster and faster and faster it went, and the crowds of people who were climbing up the hill suddenly caught sight of this terrible monster plunging down upon them, and they screamed and scattered to the right and to the left as it went hurtling by. At the bottom of the hill, it charged across the road, knocking over a telegraph pole and flattening two parked cars as it went. Then it rushed madly across about 20 fields, breaking down all the fences and hedges in its path. It went right through the middle of a herd of fine Jersey cows, and then through a flock of sheep, and then through a paddock full of horses, and then through a yard full of pigs, and soon the whole countryside was a seething mass of panicked cooking animals stampeding in all directions. The peach was still going at a tremendous speed, with no sign of slowing down, and about... A mile farther down, it came into a village. Down the main street of the village it rolled, with people leaping frantically out of its path right and left. And at the end of the street, it went crashing right through the wall of an enormous building and out the other side, leaving two gaping round holes in the brickwork. This building happened to be a famous factory where they made chocolate, and almost at once a great wither, river of warm melted chocolate came pouring out of the hole in the factory wall. A minute later, this brown sticky mess was flowing through every street in the village, oozing under the doors of the houses and into people's shops and gardens. Children were wading it up to their knees, and some were even trying to swim in it, and all of them were sucking it into their mouths in great greedy gulps and shrieking with joy. But the peach rushed on across the countryside and on and on and on, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Cow sheds, stables, pigsties, barns, bungalows, hayricks, anything that got in its way went toppling over like an iron pin. An old man sitting quietly beside a stream had his fishing rod whisked out of his hands as it went dashing by, and a woman called Daisy Entwistle was standing so close to it as it passed that she had the skin taken off the tip of her nose. Would it ever stop? Why should it? A round object will always keep rolling as long as it's on a downhill slope, and in this case, the land that sloped downhill all the way until it reached the ocean, the same ocean that James has begged his aunts to be allowed to visit the day before. Well, perhaps he was going to visit it now. The peach was rushing closer and closer to it every second, and closer also to the towering white cliffs that came first. These cliffs are the most famous in the whole of England, and they are hundreds of feet high. Below them, the sea is deep and cold and hungry. Many ships have been swallowed up and lost forever on this part of the coast, and all the men who were in them as well. The peach was now only a hundred yards away from the cliff, now fifty, now twenty, now ten, now five, and when it reached the edge of the cliff, it seemed to leap into the sky and hang there suspended for a few seconds, till turning over and over in the air, then it began to fall. Down, 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 down. Smack. It hit the water with a colossal splash and sank like a stone. But a few seconds later, up it came, and this time it stayed, floating serenely upon the surface of the water. That's in chapter 16. See you soon. Bye.